end lead to higher compensation. And that's only because you are literally faster and better at things than maybe some generalists would be. So I make leak code videos pretty quickly, right? I'm going to make an analogy, but I promise you this goes far beyond leak code. When I first started though, it took me for ever to plan out and record videos. One of the first videos, largest rectangle in histogram, it took me forever. I planned that video out for multiple days because I really wanted it to be good. And then I think it got like 10 videos in the first day or whatever. Some people would say that's a waste of time, right? But this time investment paid off bigly because it only took me like a few videos, like let's say five videos. And then like my rate of improvement was something like this. Let's say it's linear and I got good at five videos in and then, you know, it started to plateau, but I was already pretty good. Whereas maybe other people, they don't take that time investment. Their rate of growth is slower. Maybe they'll get to the same goal eventually. And now I've gotten to the point, I sit down one hour, solve the problem, record it, edit the video, and I'm done. Let's say that the average programmer or leak coder could do 10 leak code videos every 40 hours, if even that. Well, I can do 40 videos in 40 hours. So not only can I do more, am I faster than them, but the finished product turns out better as well. This is the power of specializing. The value that can be created is massive. And this is not only about programming. When you think about it, our whole society is built on top of specializing specialized skill sets. Let's say a few hundred or thousand years ago, whatever, I don't know my human history, people would do everything themselves. You have one person here, this person is going to farm, they're going to hunt for their own food, they're going to cook their own food, they're going to make their own clothes, they're going to treat their own illnesses, they're going to do everything. But now we have a society where people have specialized skill sets in each one of these things. Not every person has to do every single thing. So not only does that save time, but the finished product, the quality of these things is better now. This is where we talk about programming. The cool thing is that even in these disciplines, let's say medicine and programming, for example, even in these disciplines, we can still further specialize. You can be, let's say, a family doctor or you can be an orthopedic surgeon. Now, you tell me which one of these guys do you think gets paid more, the family general doctor or the orthopedic surgeon? Probably the specialized guy. Moving on to programming, the specialized skills you learn can differentiate you and lead to higher compensation. And that's only because you are literally faster and better better at things than maybe some generalists would be. That said, I do want to mention that a generalist in programming is still really valuable. Outside of leak code, I definitely don't have any specialized skills in programming. I think the power of a generalist is that they can quickly move to a new problem space and start being productive relatively quickly. But that's assuming two things. The problem space isn't specialized, like you probably can't have a generalist go into like database or operating system internals. Second, that the generalist is smart and can pick up new skills quickly. But when you think of it, even that is kind of its own specialized skill set. From my time at Google, I can 100% tell you that some generalists are just much better than others. Now, I'm not saying that you should compare yourself to other people. That's not what I do. But that is kind of what employers do when you're looking to hire somebody. By definition, you're comparing people. I mean, you kind of want somebody who's really skilled and somebody you can afford at the same time, though. So take, for example, a popular YouTuber you might have heard of called The Primogen. We all know him. He's a skilled developer. He might be specialized in some areas, but from what I know, he's kind of a generalist. He knows a lot about like front end, back end. He can do most things. Like if you're hiring a software developer, Primogen can probably fill that role. But the problem is he's pretty expensive, right? Maybe you can't match Primogen's skills because he has a lot of experience. I can't match him in every single area, but there might be one area I can outdo Primogen. You know, I bet Primogen isn't better than me at Leak Code. And you might say, well, you know, Leak Code, who cares? That's not really relevant to jobs. You know, that's fair. But when you think about it from a market perspective in the market of YouTube, 
Primogen probably can't do better than me when it comes to leak code videos. That's not because he's dumb. That's not because he's not smart. It's because one man, one person can't do everything. He can't, he doesn't have infinite time. If he was going to do leak code videos, then he'd have to stop doing other kinds of videos, right? Again, I'm not trying to make a comparison. I'm not trying to like do a dick measuring contest or whatever. I'm just trying to like explain this to you. This is how I see the world. And if I'm wrong about something, you can let me know. And the cool thing is sometimes you can even start your own business from specialized skills. By the way, did I mention that if you're preparing for coding interviews, you should check out neatcode.io. Okay, last thing, last thing, last footnote. I just want to add sometimes with specialized skills, it can be hard to find a market. It. Kind of like with Primogen, right? He's really, really good, but he's pretty expensive. Well, if you're really, really specialized, let's say in operating systems or database internals, you probably expect a high salary. So the only types of companies that are probably going to hire you as like a database person are probably database companies, which sometimes can be limited. There's not a million database companies out there, but there are a lot of general companies like healthcare companies, banks that don't need database people, but they need generalists, right? So that's kind of the trade off. You know, sometimes being a generalist is fine as well. I'll try to probably title the video where I don't say that specializing is better than generalizing because that's not the point that I'm trying to make. I'm just trying to explain my opinion about the pros and cons of each of these.